Hello. Vinge Diaries here. Today, I am going to explain the Canadian horror film called, Scarecrows. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A man carries a scarecrow across a cornfield. He digs and plants the scarecrow firmly on the ground then leaves. There happens to be a woman inside the scarecrow. She tries to speak but can't. A crow lands on her and pecks her. She screams for help but nobody is close enough to hear her. A group of friends stops at a gas station. They are called Farbzy, Eli, Devon, and Ash. Devon and Ash get out because they have to pee and leave the boys in the car. Eli thinks he's in love with Ash, but Farbzy thinks he's falling in love too soon, that they'll meet plenty of girls when they go to college. Eli takes out a ring and stares at it. He's been planning to propose to Ash. Farbzy sprays cologne on both of them to impress the girls, but it smells so bad so Eli throws it out. After peeing, Devon asks Ash if she's going to break up with Eli because he's going to college and she thinks college boys can't be trusted. Ash says she's not sure yet because she really trusts Eli. Suddenly, a thumb falls on the roof of their car. They poke their heads out the window and look at the sky, and there are some crows flying. Eli starts freaking out and Farbsy tries to calm him down. Eli wants to call the cops, but Farbsy stops him because he thinks they'll waste their entire weekend talking to the cops. Farbsy tries to push it off with the windscreen wipers but it smears blood all over it. Eli goes to distract the girls while Farbsy hides the thumb under the car. They take their belongings from the car and they head for Miller's Lagoon. As they're walking, someone is hiding in the bushes watching them. They stop at a cornfield and they see a scarecrow, but are surprised to see that the bird isn't scared of it. They see a scarecrow on the ground, and Ash wants to try to pet it, but she gets spooked when she sees it eating a human finger. Farbsy however lies and convinces her that it's not a finger, that crows don't eat meat. In the cornfield, someone is running through it with his face covered. He stops, uncovers his face then screams for help but no one can hear him. A man appears behind him whistling. The boy tries to run but the man pulls him back with a rope, and when he falls down, he kills him with a sickle. Back at the group, they run out of water, the girls say that they're tired and want to turn back. Farbsy and Eli urge them to take a break while the two of them scout ahead to see how much farther the lagoon was. The boys find the lagoon and call the girls to see it, and they all get excited. They run to it and they all jump in the water. Eli is the last one, and he eventually takes his off then jumps in the water and they start playing. Meanwhile, the farmer drags the dead body away to hide it. Later, while sitting at the beach, Eli decides to give Ash the ring as a promise to her before he goes to college. When they were done with swimming, Devin says that she's not walking all the way back, and tells Farbsy to go get the car. Eli feels sorry for him and chooses to help him get the car while the girls wait for them to get back. Along the way, they lose their way, and Farbsy guesses which way it was. They somehow make their way back but find that their car has been stolen. Farbsy loses it and then screams, and back at the beach, the girls hear the scream. They hear someone walking in the woods and this alarms them. They ask who's out there, and when they hear the noise a second time, they choose to run away. The boys start arguing over whose fault it is that the car got stolen and they start fighting. The girls run into them and stop their fight, and ask them why they're fighting, so they tell them that the car has been stolen. They notice the farmer in the distance and shout at him to get his attention, but he walks away. They get to his fence and they squeeze in. Farbsy is the last one, and he's afraid to pass through because he had an incident with a fence as a child and was injured. He musters some courage and squeezes through but somehow manages to get stuck. Eli tries to help him get the fence from his leg, but he pulls too hard and it comes out with a piece of his flesh. Eli helps carry him and they go to look for the farmer. They find a spot with a scarecrow and they lay Farbsy on the ground. Eli says that he'll go get help, and Devin chooses to go with him, but she only wants some alone time with Eli. Ash stays behind to take care of Farbsy. After they've walked a little bit, they come close to the farmer's house. Eli tries calling for help but Devin stops him, and they get a little bit distracted. Meanwhile, Farbsy is in so much pain. He tells Ash to pass him his bag and then asks Ash to roll him a joint. Meanwhile, Eli hears a whistling sound, and when he turns around, the farmer knocks him out. Devin tries to run, but the farmer knocks her out as well and drags them away. Farbsy says that he wants to relieve himself, so he asks Ash to help him go somewhere else. Meanwhile, the farmer carries Devin and drags her to a room, where there's also the boy's corpse. He ties her to a chair takes off his belt, and ties her neck to the chair. The farmer walks away, while Devin is screaming for help, then walks back with a needle and string. He sews her mouth shut, and knocks her out when her screaming gets too loud, then carries out the corpse. Back in the cornfield, Farbsy can't relieve himself with Ash being so close, so he sends her back to the scarecrow to wait for him. She stares at the scarecrow and wonders why it looks so scary. She goes to investigate and sees a piece of flesh on the arm. She sees maggots coming from the mouth and when she goes to touch it, the head falls and the maggots fall on her, which freaks her out. While Farbsy is still relieving himself, he hears the farmer's whistle, but ignores it. Back at the house, 
Devon wakes up and sees the farmer carrying Eli and puts him on a chair, then tying him up. The farmer, with his cold presence, walks over to another room and fills his syringe with a paralyzing liquid. Meanwhile, Devon tries to get Eli's attention by humming, but Eli is still out cold. The farmer comes back, and before he injects him, Devon rips her stitches wide open and screams at Eli to wake up. The farmer stops and instead injects Devon. The farmer now gets his scarecrow mask and puts it on Devon's head. Back at the cornfield, Ash calls out to her friends when suddenly, a man grabs her from behind. The man is the farmer's son. He tells her that he's been watching them and that they made a mistake trespassing. He tells her that the farmer won't let them escape, unless she goes with her. Ash chooses to follow the man and leaves Farbsy behind. They arrive at the house and she sees their stolen car. She asks him how it got there, but the man tells her to trust him, so she does. They walk through a door and she sees the chair with blood on it. He tells her that the scarecrows are actually people, that they're all the farmer's victims. The son isn't happy with what the farmer has been doing to other people. He says that the farmer kills all trespassers because one day his wife was killed by trespassers. Suddenly, they hear the farmer trying to open the door and the man tells Ash to hide. The farmer walks in and his son makes an excuse as to why he's there. The son drags Farbsy to the chair and they both tie him up. The farmer lifts up a cloth and reveals Eli, also with his mouth sewn. The son drags Eli and starts tying him up on a cross, while the farmer picks up nails. The farmer nails one hand on the wood, and before he nails the other, Ash yells at him to stop. She reveals herself and tells him to stop, with a weapon behind her back. She tries to attack him but the farmer stops her with ease. She tells the son to help her, but he is afraid of the farmer, so he does nothing, and the farmer knocks her out cold. Out in the cornfield, they raise Eli in the cross and put the scarecrow mask on his head, then leave him there. Ash wakes up with a mask on her head. The son comes and takes it off, and tells her to stay quiet. She's also been tied on the chair. As the son walks away, she glances to her side and sees an axe on the wall. The son walks back with a knife, and when she thinks he's about to kill her, he cuts her loose. He unties her, then tells her that the injection she got will wear off soon. She asks where her friends are, and he tells her that they've been turned into scarecrows and that she needs to save herself. She asks how to escape, and he tells her to escape through the cornfield and will find a road. Suddenly, the farmer appears with his cold presence. His son tells him to let her escape, that these people don't deserve to die. Without saying a word, the farmer walks over while the son still tries to persuade him to stop murdering people. The son tells Ash to escape, but she doesn't leave. The son hands the farmer the knife, while still persuading him to let her go. Ash manages to scooch by them and leaves, while the son asks his father for forgiveness. The farmer, however, sticks the knife in his neck. The son pulls it out and falls to the ground, then bleeds to death. Ash manages to run into the cornfield. She stops when she sees a scarecrow. Hoping that it's Ely, she gets closer and pulls off the mask. She screams when she sees Devon dead. She pulls out a nail from her hand, guesses a direction then runs. She finds another scarecrow. She hopes that it's Ely, and when she gets closer, the farmer who is disguised as a scarecrow jumps off. She runs as the farmer chases her and falls down. The farmer gets close, then she pulls off his mask and sticks the nail in his cheek, then starts kicking him. When she sees that he can't move, she runs through the cornfield. When she stops, she hears a boy's voice whimpering in fear. She follows the sound and sees a scarecrow. She pulls off the mask and sees Farbsy. She tries to pull out the nails but she fails. Farbsy points at a spade on the ground, so she tries to use it to free him. Suddenly, the wounded farmer pops up behind her. She tries to escape, but he knocks her down and starts strangling her. Farbsy insults him and hearing this, the farmer turns his attention to him. He picks up the spade and kills Farbsy on the head with it. Ash uses this chance to escape while he's not looking. She stops in the field and while she's wondering which direction to go, hears the whistle. She turns back and sees the farmer standing there. The farmer keeps chasing her through the field. She falls and hits her head on a rock and she gets knocked out. When she wakes up, she sees a car in front of her. She can't walk, so she crawls towards it, screaming for help. The occupants, however, are having too much fun that they don't notice Ash outside. The occupants think they hear something, but they look outside and don't see anything so they continue having fun. Ash gets to the car and tries to open the door, but the farmer drags her away at the last minute into the cornfield. The next day, the farmer drags her, already on the cross, and plants her in the ground. She wakes up, and a crow attacks her over and over. She struggles until her mask falls off. The movie ends with Ash seeing scarecrows to her left and to her right as she screams for in fear. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.